So if you have an RODI unit, then you've probably forgotten to turn it off at one point in time. And if you're unlucky, that results in a flood. If you're lucky and you uh, had the foresight to put on a float valve, that results in a waste of DI resin. Or maybe you've gone the other way and forgotten to turn it on and you ran your ATO dry, which obviously has its own problems. Um, if you automate your RODI, uh, it does away with all that, uh, turning it on and shutting it off uh, when uh, you need it. And it also does a lot of the flushing uh, to get you really pure water and not waste uh, DI resin. Uh, so there have been a number of RODI uh, automation threads or smart RODIs, um, but I thought I'd throw one more out there. This one's a little bit simpler. Um, and uh, I'll include all the uh, coding to get it done as well. Uh, so for this, all you need is a, a functioning RODI unit with a flush valve and an automatic shutoff valve. You'll need a controller and you'll need three solenoids. And this solenoid that I have here uh, already has the quarter inch uh, uh, quick connects. It also is 120 volts, so you don't need a AC adapter. You could use a DC one, it'd probably be a little bit safer as well, um, but then you have to have a bunch of DC adapters running around, so I was just going with the AC ones. Uh, and I'll put a link down below uh, to show where you can get all this stuff. Uh, you'll also need, um, if you're using the AC, um, some scrap power cords, uh, three of them. Uh, to connect up to the to the solenoids and whatever um, whatever safety mechanisms that you're also going to be adding onto the end. So that might include a float switch. So if your valve uh, uh, sticks open and uh, you want to have a float switch in your RODI container uh, to turn it off, you could have that. Uh, the, what I use is I use, because I'm in the basement and I'm not too worried about a flood, I mostly dislike wasting uh, DI resin. I'm using a pressure shutoff switch. Uh, this will shut off at pressure, and when the pressure reaches 30 PSI, so very useful, and I'll also put a link in for this. And uh, so to start out with, we need to prep our cords to connect up to our solenoids, and the solenoids use spade connectors, so we're just going to crimp uh, some of the female connectors onto the end here. Slide it onto the end, take your crimping tool, and crimp it down. Check to make sure it's on tight. Do it to both the, uh, pos or the uh, power and the neutral the black and the neutral and the white. You don't need your uh, ground for this. All right, so do that three more times and connect them up to the solenoid valves. And then your solenoid valves are ready to go. If you're using um, uh, this pressure switch, you'll also need to do it uh, to some cabling. And I always like to have this stuff around. It is a doorbell uh, cable, and it's perfect for switches that you connect up to a breakout box. And so you'll need to make spade connectors that hook up to that. All right, so this is the RODI unit that I'm using. Uh, I've already shut off the input water, and let's get started. So the first thing that we're gonna do up here, I have uh, my membrane bypass, and I can turn that on and off right here. I'm just gonna replace that valve with a solenoid. And this is gonna be my bypass solenoid. And uh, just make sure the solenoids have a uh, directionality to them. 
and uh, this one has a small arrow on it and you want to make sure that you're setting that up in the right direction. Okay, so we've got that connected. Uh, so that we're going to program to automatically flush our membrane uh, so that we don't have a buildup of, of scaling in the membrane. And we're going to disconnect our product water. And we're going to connect a T into that. And this T is going to have a solenoid valve that comes off of it. And this solenoid valve is going to go to waste and it's going to uh, flush uh, out of our, our line the first little bit of water that comes through uh, the RODI unit because it will have a little bit more TDS in it and we don't want that going or through the membrane, we don't want that going through uh, the DI resin. So we'll connect that to the waste, or in uh, my setup, I have it going to the skimmer flush uh, system. Then we're gonna connect a, another solenoid to the other side of that T, and this solenoid is going to be the one that shuts on and off your product water. And this I'm going to connect to the DI resin. And I have it connected into a T down here um, because I have it going to a pressure tank, a five gallon pressure tank, so that I don't have to produce uh, water constantly. And that actually decreases my, uh, my DI resin consumption. Uh, I know that a uh, pressure tank is not ideal to have connected to DI resin, um, but if you do the calculations, it's a minimal difference, uh, so I'm okay with that. Alright, so that's that. Uh, if you have uh, any other uh, systems, then you'll also want to connect those in at this time, so you could have Like in my uh, DI storage container, I could have a float switch that would turn it off. I'm using uh, this pressure switch, and so I'm going to plug that in. And that'll turn my uh, RO unit off when the pressure reaches uh, 30 psi. And we just have to connect that uh, up to our breakout box. And excuse the watt mess of wires right now. Uh, wire management is not my strong suit. Uh, but we've connected that into the breakout box. Uh, I have it in the third slot and one to ground. And that's all you need to do and that'll turn on and off the switch uh, at the number three switch. So once that is all hooked up, all you need to do is turn on the water and check for any leaks. And as long as there aren't any leaks, Then we're good to go and we can start programming it. Alright, so for the actual programming of your auto RODI, you need five outlets. Three of these are going to be actual physical outlets uh, run off of an EB8 or an EB4. And two of them are going to be virtual outlets. And to make these virtual outlets, if you have an Apex 2016, you can do it through Fusion. If you have a classic like I do, then you need to go to your classic dashboard and you need to go to configure, module setup, and then go down to the bottom here and under add module, 
you'll choose, if you choose a Direct Connect 4, then you'll add four outlets. If you choose a Direct Connect 8, uh, then you'll add eight outlets. Uh, so we'll choose Direct Connect 4 and then uh, a start control address that has not been used before. So I already have uh, at least eight outlets. So I would choose a nine. Then you'll add the module. So once you've done that, uh, your modules will show up in here. And they should show up at the end. So you're going to pull out two of those outlets and put them over here uh, so they can be used. All right, so we're going to start with one of the virtual outlets, and I've named this RO Timer. And this timer is going to allow us to turn on the RO unit and have it turn off automatically after a set period of time. So it's kind of our manual uh, switch on our RO system. So uh, rename it what you will. I have mine named RO Timer. And then go to Control Type Advanced and have it fall back to off. And then we're going to have it turn on if a feed mode is turned on. And I have feed mode A. And then it will keep uh, stay on for a set period of time. I have it for 12 hours currently. And it will stay on for that amount of time uh, before it turns off. Uh, now we need to program our uh, second virtual outlet. Uh, this is uh, this one is controlled by that pressure switch that I installed. You could also have this controlled by a float switch or any other switch that you desire. And this one will be uh, have it set to off. And then if the switch is triggered, then it will turn on. All right. Now we need to program our actual outlets. And so we have three actual outlets, a DI bypass, a uh, reverse osmosis flush, and a row DI. And these all control solenoid valves. So we'll start with the RO flush. And we set it to off. And now we need to decide when we want our RO membrane to turn on. I have it turning on twice a day. And I have that starting at 3 o'clock in the morning and 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, we want this to run, this RO, uh, we want this RO flush to run for one minute. So we have it running from 15 to 15.01, and that would actually make it run for two minutes. Uh, so we put in a defer of one minute. And we also want it to run if our manual setup is triggered so I have it running if the feed A is triggered as well. Now going to the RO bypass, we want that to run after the membrane flush has already worked. So we're going to run that uh, from 15 to 15.02 and from 3 to 3.02, but we're going to defer it for two minutes so it runs a minute later uh, than the RO flush, and we'll also have it run if the feed mode is activated as well. And then finally, we're going to program our RODI. And so we set it to off. And then we have it turn on from 15 to 15.50, so for 50 minutes, and from 3 to 3.50, another 50 minutes, twice a day. And uh, we're going to uh, also turn it on if that virtual outlet, the RO timer is on. And we're going to start this one three minutes after everything else uh, so that the RO membrane flush and the DI bypass have time to run. And lastly, we're going to turn it off if the pressure uh, triggers that pressure switch or if you have a float switch, if, that, if the water has triggered that float switch. So that's really all there is to it. Right now I'm producing water because I need to uh, make some salt water and uh, the RODI is on. So this is a really easy way to automate this process and not forget uh, to turn your RO off and end up with a flood or waste an entire canister of uh, DI resin. So all the code uh, for this is in the link down below so you can just copy and paste that in. If you have any comments or suggestions, please put them in the comments down below. And if you have a DIY project that you would like to see me tackle, please add those as well. 
Uh, this is one of the first videos that I made, so I know it's going to be a little rough, uh, but hopefully you guys like the project and I can keep doing more of these.